Hello, welcome to the Jacksonville History Show. I'm Emily Rutherford Liska, Executive Director of the Jacksonville Historical Society. This is the show that explores and celebrates North Florida history. And no better way to do it on this show than with Dr. Thomas Graham. Hello, Dr. Graham, so nice to have you here. Emily, good afternoon, it's great to be here. And I am used to calling you Tom, so I, I may take that liberty, but I will tell you, do you deserve those letters? Uh, the work you've done um, with, before, during, and since your doctorate in history, monumental, and the citizens of Florida need to be grateful to you. And your most recent work is what we're gonna discuss on the show, and that is Mr. Fla Mr. Flagler's Florida. And if uh, any of the viewers don't know who Mr. Flagler is in respect to Florida, I hope perhaps you can offer us an overview. We're talking, of course, of Henry Flagler. And uh, just briefly, why this, who this Henry Flagler was and why he came to Florida. And later we'll talk about what he did. Right. Well, when people say Flagler, it often comes out Florida because he had a tremendous influence in the late 19th and early 20th century on the east coast of Florida, from Jacksonville all the way to Key West. Henry Flagler was the railroad and hotel pioneer of, uh, of Florida and speeded up the development of the state uh, by who knows how many decades. Now, when he first saw Florida, that is Henry Flagler for the first time, uh, d did he already have possible designs to turn this into a railroad resort business? Or, or n no. What was his initial introduction to this place? Henry Flagler came to Florida for the first time in 1878, as so many people did in those days because his wife had tuberculosis. His first wife, Mary, was a long sufferer. And there was no cure for TB in those days. And uh, those who were, who were suffering would come to a warm weather uh, place to spend the winter. So Flagler came to Jacksonville, which was then the end of the railroad lines. And, uh, and took a side trip to St. Augustine and saw the old town and saw that it was run down and full of sick people and he didn't much like it and he came back to Jacksonville and then returned to New York. He was uh, a co-founder with John D. Rockefeller of Standard Oil Company and Standard Oil by this time had moved from Ohio to New York City and so that's where Flagler was living. So he'd made his millions at this point. At this point, Standard Oil was sort of finished. It had monopolized the oil industry. It was a completed project. It was coming under criticism by the government and by newspapers for being a monopoly. And I think Flagler was looking for another challenge. He was a man who always liked to be doing things. And, uh, and his first wife, Mary, passed away. And he married again to his second wife, Ida Alice. And he returned to uh, Florida. But this time when he came, the railroad had been extended all the way to St. Augustine. And he said, well, there's been a marvelous transformation in the old city. What had happened was that a brand new, big luxury resort hotel had been constructed. And so now you had wealthy northerners, not just sick northerners, uh, coming to Florida. And Flagler got the idea that, well, here might be a challenge to, uh, to build a, a first class hotel for wealthy people who had a lot of money and as Flagler said, uh, didn't know what to spend it on. And we're going to get to that hotel in a minute. What I'd like to do, I'd like to sort of get the producers to call up the cover of your book. Here it is. 
Now, in your book, Mr. Flagler's Florida, what was your approach? Because a few people have written about, excuse me, Mr. Flagler's St. Augustine, what was your approach? Because a few people have written about Flagler in right. Florida through the years. There, there have been three full-scale biographies of Flagler. Uh, one done back in the 40s, before there was a lot of information. One done in the 80s. It was sort of a popular account that, that sensationalizes his life. And then another one in the 80s that, that's a business history. And what I thought we needed was a fresh look. It's been a quarter of a century since those books appeared. And one that tried to personalize Henry Flagler's story. So as much as I could, I populated the book with not just Flagler and his wives, but with his business associates, with other people who were active here uh, in Florida at the time, with uh, the rich and famous and the not so rich and famous who stayed at his hotels or worked at his hotels. So I, I tried to make it uh, uh, lively and personal. And Tom, you did such a good job of this that you have, your book and you have just been selected. You will receive Best General History Book in the state of Florida for 2015. It was actually a 2014 publication, but those were the publications being considered. It's known as the Charlton Thibault Award. I hope I've said that right. And it's being given by the Florida Historical Society. Quite an honor and congratulations. So if people want to read the top book in Florida for the year, they need to get Mr. Flagler's Florida. Wonderful, wonderful work, Tom. Thank you. And so, so that's what you put together, and I've, I've had people tell me they picked up your book and they just couldn't put it down. And, and, and so that's the kind of history that we like to dish up here in Florida, because Florida's history is exciting, and thank you for presenting it from that perspective. Tell, tell us about, you know, uh, this, this hotel, and we're going to need to go a couple. Uh, we have an image. I know another image of him, Henry Flagler about this time, mm -hmm. and it'll, it'll move forward. Oh, this is me not moving them forward, and I asked the producers to call them up. I am so embarrassed. This is Henry Flagler. Uh, what age would you say roughly? That's probably just about the way he looked when he came to Florida. He was 55 years old. So a mature man who had already had a full career. Uh -huh. And here he was coming to the land of the Fountain of Youth to start a second career. And, and he succeeded. And he was getting pretty close to the mortality age of the day, I'm thinking. It was you know, around, what, 58, 60 at the most, most likely in those days. So uh, he was remarkable in that respect. And he would not only have uh, one more wife, he'd have three all total. <laughs> and. Uh, and I, I think by all accounts, and Tom, I haven't uh, finished with your book, love them all very much. Henry Flagler uh, had uh, personal tragedies in his lives. Uh, his first wife died. His second wife went insane. Uh, he hired the best doctors he could, but they're really under the medicine of the day. There wasn't much that could be done for her. I'm not sure that today's medicine could do any better. But he, he provided well for Ida Alice when she passed away. And Decades after Flagler, she was a multimillionaire, but she didn't know it. And lived longer than he did in, in, a, in a sane asylum, is, is, or an uh, asylum of sorts. Yes, she, she had uh, a very comfortable life living with uh, a few other wealthy women who, uh, who were mentally ill. And then Flagler uh, married a third time to Mary Lily Keenan of North Carolina, uh, a woman that he had known for years and that I think he was comfortable with. And, uh, and they seem to have lived out uh, the last dozen or so years of Henry Flagler's life uh, pretty happily. I'd like to move on now that I realize I'm in control of the images and didn't realize that before or forgot it. And let's take a look at what Flagler did to transform St. Augustine. And please feel free to reject my notion that that's what he did. And I'm going to move to the next image here. Uh-oh. 
oh, the image will come up in just a minute. I think I've moved past. We're going to go back. And this was the very grand Ponce de Leon Hotel. And what would you like to say about this and that transformation uh, comment I made? Sure, sure. Well, in addition to the hotel, some things you, well, one thing you can see is if you look down in the bottom right-hand corner, you can see a railroad train. That's right downtown St. Augustine today. Henry Flagler had temporary railroad tracks run there because he needed to fill in a marsh. So Henry Flagler almost doubled the size of St. Augustine, at least the footprint of St. Augustine, by filling in marshes to make room for his hotels and his railroad station. So that's one thing he did. But he, he platted streets. Uh, he built sanitary sewers. Uh, he encouraged the town to modernize. And then he built what was uh, called the ultimate luxury resort hotel in the world. He hired and, that is, and that is the Ponce de Leon is what you're referring yes, to, yes. which is today Flagler College for right. those viewers who right. need to know that. He was, he was in New York City and he had access to the best architects and artists. Uh, Louis C. Tiffany did the, the art glass windows and John Carrere and Thomas Hastings who did the New York Public Library later on, uh, were the architects. So he, so he had top-notch people. And he, he never, all the way from uh, uh, Palm Beach to Miami to Nassau, he never built another hotel that was anywhere near as uh, stately and grand as the Ponce de Leon in, in St. Augustine. How many employees did it take to run a place like that? How many rooms did they have for guests? Give us a little quick picture of that. Okay, it, it had hundreds of employees. I'm not sure I could give you an absolute number, but uh, in, the, in the realm of 250 to 350 employees, uh, all sorts of people that, that were servants in those days, uh, the number of rooms, you hear everything up to two, uh, excuse me, up to 450 rooms. But I think that's too many. I think it's more like 250 rooms. So it was a large hotel, but it wasn't a huge hotel. Flagler deliberately kept the size of the hotel down to a, uh, a reasonable size. He, he wanted it to be a, a comfortable place to live not a place that was so big that would overawe you and, and feel cold and remote. Now, uh, another image is on the screen now, and I, I believe this is a different hotel, so set me straight. Sure. In St. Augustine, though. Right. Uh, so the, the Hotel Ponce de Leon was the, the high-tone, formal hotel. And across King Street, Flagler built the Alcazar. And behind the Alcazar, he built an entertainment casino. And the, the largest section of that entertainment casino was a grand indoor swimming pool. Which people can still see it today without the water. Today, you can go and eat in the Alcazar Cafe, which uh, rests on the bottom of the, the old swimming pool. And uh, great ambiance because you have these tremendous concrete arches that you can see in the image here up above you. And, and so people could stay at the Ponce de Leon and walk across the street to go swimming, go bowling, to play tennis out back. Uh, you could go to the steam baths to uh, get physical therapy. Uh, you could go through the shopping arcade on the first floor to buy a hat or go to uh, the Adams Express Company to ship some fruit back home to your relatives in the north. Uh, or you could buy uh, oriental curios or typical Florida souvenirs. So a great tourist experience, a way to, I mean, a true resort experience in St. Augustine, Florida for all those visitors who'd race through Jacksonville on Flagler's train bridge across the St. John's to head on down. We're going to look at a couple more images before we wind up. We're almost out of time here, but we have to talk about this. Uh, tell us about the image we're looking at now. Sure. Uh, even while Henry Flagler was building up St. Augustine, 
he was already planning on extending his railroad down the East Coast. And by 1896, he was in Palm Beach, and then he went on to Miami. He paused for a minute in Miami to think about it and to have his engineers survey the route to Key West. And then he decided to go to Key West. And uh, he justified this as a business proposition. He said the Key West will be the, the closest deep water port to the new Panama Canal when it opens up. But I think Flagler was just interested in another challenge, too, just to see if it could be done. And in 1912, he, he reaches Key West. And as it turns out, the next year he'll pass away. So it's almost as if when Flagler ran out of real estate in Florida, the string of his life also ran out. Well, Tom, I want to thank you for being here. We are out of time, but I will say, for people who want to hear more of this fascinating story, your book, Henry Flagler's Flor excuse, Mr. Flagler's St. Augustine. Oh, you should have taken the hook and pulled me off this show before this. And I know it because I own this treasure of a book, Mr. Flagler's St. Augustine. But it does put his life in context with the growing Florida, the Florida he so forever changed. I want to thank you for a monumental work, an award-winning work, Professor Emeritus of History, Flagler College, Tom Graham, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Emily. It was a pleasure. Oh, and stay with us. We'll be right back with the rest of the show.